What's up, everybody? This is DDP back from my short little vacation. I spent about four days away from everything, pretty much completely off the grid in a cabin in the middle of nowhere. And apparently while I was gone, things went a little bit crazy in Mavs land. Uh, Mavs Twitter went thermonuclear for a little bit. And the Mavericks lost a couple games. Lost a very close one to the 76ers, one point. And that was just off failure to execute at the end, not double teaming on Jokic and then turning it over at the end. A lot of bad calls in that. And then we get the Lakers game where we lose by 15 despite no Anthony Davis. And in that game, that was pretty much a blowout throughout the entire portion from what I can see. The first quarter was an utter disaster. And even though Dallas did cut it to 10 late in the third quarter, it was a little bit too little too late. Things got away from him. And again, terrible officiating. Luka missed a bunch of free throws, tore his jersey. Rick got teed up and ejected from the game. And uh, yeah, yeah, not a good look. Not a good look. But all the same, I showed back up into town late yesterday and right on cue, the Mavericks righted the ship. So it's only appropriate, I guess, that as soon as I come back, things stabilize a little bit. But anyway, we're not here to talk about those two games. I don't have time to talk about those two games, unfortunately. What I can do, however, is talk about last night's game, a 109-91 win over the Philadelphia 76ers. Now, this rounded out the last of this little six-game home stand that the Mavericks had. Did I just put an H in stand? 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 Regardless, rounded out the end of a six-game home stand for the Mavericks. And after losing two straight, they really needed to answer, and they did. Now, they did dodge a bullet. Joel Embiid is out with a torn ligament in his hand. He'll be out for several weeks, it sounds like, uh, as he has to have surgery on it. And even though in this game the Mavericks were able to have that advantage, you know, they still don't have KP. I think we'll get him back during this road trip for one of these games, it sounds like. Dallas is being extra cautious with him. But, you know, they did tell us prior, yeah, they told us a few days ago that he would be back this week, and that ended up not being the case. So, you got to just kind of play it by ear and see how things are going. Right now, I'm not terribly worried, even though it's very clear how badly they need him on the floor. His spacing, his rebounding, his shot blocking, all of that is vital to this team because they've been on a skid. Despite starting the season like 16-6, and six, in the last 16 games, they're 7-9 and nine going into last night. So they've been in a little bit of not free fall, but they've been falling hard. And that's why they sit currently, after last night, 24-15, and 15, for six in the Western Conference, with the Thunder, who have been red hot since December, right on their heels. Now, in this game, Dallas had another disastrous first quarter. Uh, things looked really bad. They were behind by, I think, 14, roughly, for a good stretch of that. And where they turned it around, they, they did much better in the second quarter. They cut it to, I want to say, nine at the half. But it was still just very shaky going. And it wasn't until the third quarter, when Dallas completely flipped it on its head, Third quarter, Luka time, really good for Dallas here because they trailed something like 50-41 to 41 at half, which was abysmal. But then you flash forward and suddenly it's like 57-55 Dallas, and they just came out of the gates ready to play in the third quarter. That was huge for this team. Luka ends up flirting with another near triple-double, although the, the points are low for his end, 19 and 12. Uh, but he, his, shot, his shot has been a little inconsistent lately. He ends up for the game only 4 of 15, 1 of 3 from 3. I do. I will say this. The fact that he took only three three-pointers in this game, that's a little bit refreshing, honestly, to see. Because he's been shooting threes with way too much frequency, in my opinion, lately. And, you know, it's, it's one thing if you're writing a hot streak, but he hasn't been. The, the three-point percentage is the one area of his game where he has stayed the same or even regressed a little bit from his rookie campaign. And I think part of that is just the difficulty he puts on himself in it. The stats show Luka has not been near the clutch performer he was last year. Do not take out your torches. That is just an observable fact if you look at his percentages in the clutch, whether you're talking about two-point field goals, three-point field goals, turnovers, whatever. It hasn't been quite the same this year. That's not to say he himself is not that. It's just to say the data shows us through nearly half the season at this point, he has not performed in that way. Now, in this case... Uh, he ends up still impacting the game very positively in other areas. 12 assists. He got a lot of guys involved. He got Maxie going a couple times. Maxie hit a couple big threes. Dorian Finney-Smith, who's been shooting like 39% on three, had himself a solid game as well with 16 points. 
I mean, I think Dodo is our second best three point shooter on the team in terms of percentage at this point, which is just crazy. But Luca got everyone else involved, and even though his own shot wasn't there, I felt like that that's one of the best elements of his game is he can understand when it's not working for him and still impact the game in a positive way, still control a game well enough in other areas as well. But yeah, it, it was very, uh, the game got a little bit iffy in the fourth quarter because Horford kept hitting threes. He had a couple threes in a row and it was just like up to 10, down to seven, up to nine, down to six, like back and forth. But Dallas was able to hold on and net this win. I feel pretty good about this. Now I will say a couple grains of salt here. Philadelphia has been nails at home this year. Very good win percentage at home. Hey, we got them at home earlier this year. And uh, on the road, they've been much worse. Not near as good on the road. Below 500 on the road for the uh, 76ers. And, you know, if they have Embiid, it's a different game, you could say. But, hey, if we have Porzingis, it's probably also a different game. That was part of the frustrating takeaway for me looking at people talking about that Lakers game the other night is, you know, if you look at, like, Bleacher Report and stuff like that, they're going to tell you, oh, well, the Lakers beat Dallas without ad well okay that's true but it's also an incomplete picture it, it's not acknowledging hey they were without their second best player we were also without our second best player like you got to give us a little bit of credit there but it is what it is um officiating has been a big problem <laughs> for dallas lately and that all culminated with rick losing his damn mind after the laker game i don't really want to get into all that i again i followed it all pretty closely as I was able to once I got back into town but it, it's definitely something where it's become a trend this season it's not just Luca not getting calls it's just questionable calls in general that are impacting this game and leaving Dallas in a vulnerable situation but you're gonna have to work through it for now there's not anything else you can do about it we've already raised the point Rick's gotten worked up to the point of getting ejected and calling it out he'll probably see some kind of fine about that even though he joked that he was trying to avoid that. But we'll see. We'll see. So in this case, as I said, now that the homestand is over, Dallas is going to have to go to Golden State, and that'll be on the 14th. So that's Tuesday when they'll be playing that game. Um, with the 76ers, you know, I, I feel good about the win. It's a good bounce-back win. You get a healthy win margin there. What I would hesitate to say for this team, though, is that just because we got this win doesn't mean that like okay we've we've fully righted the ship everything's fine I don't think it's that way I think you still have to work through it Philadelphia like I said not a good road team this year they were without their best player and you just you have to see you have to string a few of these wins together I think or at least win something like four to five or four to six at the very least before I say okay you've righted the ship because We've been on a downward trend over the past week and a half now, and a lot of that has corresponded with Porzingis being out. I don't, I don't know what this team's answer is. They need some kind of trade, but I don't. I'm still really reluctant to do a big shakeup because I think this is a good team. A lot of people are saying, "Hey, we peaked too early," or you know, "We we peaked way early in the year, and now we're on a downward trend." I don't think that's the case. I don't think we've peaked yet. I think that we got really hot. Played really well. We've crashed back down a little bit. And, you know, we, we've seen this in the past, even with other really good Maverick teams. They round back into form, and they do better later on. It's rare for them to just fall off a cliff after the first couple months of the season. Not saying it's never happened. Just saying it's much more rare. So we'll see how they end up answering in this case. But it's definitely something that they have. They still have that $11.8 million trade exception from the Harrison Barnes deal. Uh, that's something else to consider as we talk about trades. There's a free asset for you right there, and they've got that until February 7th. So they've got time to use it. They also have another $1.2 million from the Wesley Matthews one that expires January 31st, so end of this month. They've got some assets that they can use. I don't know what they go after. A Drummond would be really encouraging because I, I would be worried a little bit about how it affects the, the spacing since he's more of a low-post guy. He can shoot a little bit outside, but... It would be nice to have a guy that can give you 20 and 10 or, hell, even just rebound, gobble up rebounds and all of that. But you got to see how it affects things. You got to see what the price is. There's different reasons out there for why that might be the biggest fish I'd be willing to, to kind of take a stab at and see if we could get. But I think for the most part, what Dallas will do 
is something more middle of the road, something where they'll try and address either the front court a little bit or maybe a 3 and D type player. Although Dodo has been pretty good for him in that capacity. So Covington, it's another name that's been a throw out there. I don't know that Covington's enough of an upgrade at this point over what you're getting at a Dodo to make a lot of sense for us. But uh, let's see here. Uh, this is from Nick Angstad on Twitter. He's talking about, uh, I mentioned this earlier, the Mavericks were 16-6. and six. When they were 16-6, and six, they were healthy. Luka hadn't missed any games, and KP had only missed one. The last 16 games, they're 7-9, and nine, have missed five games with Luka. That counted the Miami game, which he played less than two minutes. And KP now has missed six and counting. Tim Hardaway Jr. also in that stretch missed four games, which counted the OKC game. Uh, I don't know why he says counting OKC, because he went down... I thought it was in a Laker game. He went down in a Laker game. Regardless, the point is, you've had your top three guys each miss at least four games over the last 16. We have not been healthy or complete in this stretch. So while we are struggling, while we do need, while we do need more from this team, it is important to consider they're going through a rough stretch in terms of health. And when your top three guys are each missing at least four games in that stretch, you're going to have some extra difficulties. So we'll see how they shake out. I don't want to ramble too much more on this. I know this is a more brief post-game show here. Um, Again, with the travel and everything, getting back in last night, I was able to watch the game, but I wasn't able to really take notes of it the way I like to. Uh, I watched a lot of it just from, frankly, the airport while I was waiting on my stupid-ass luggage. But all the same... Uh, That's going to do it for my time, guys. I'm going to record some extra content as well for today. Separate from this, that I'll post out. But don't forget to like this video, leave a comment below, subscribe to the Dallas Prospect, and remember, every legend was once a prospect. Salute.